recall that the received signal is given by the convolution of transmit signal with the channel response for high speed wireless communication systems the channel impulse response can be very long because intersymbol interference occurs many tens or even hundreds of symbols in the future it has been known that an equalizer response is significantly longer than the channel impulse response therefore a time domain equalizer implements a large number of computations and we have to wait for the convergence of the equalizer taps considering that many equalizers are implemented with filtering operations we can think of the equalizer as a multi armed phase lock loop just like a phase lock loop has a finite convergence time an equalizer also has a convergence time before which the decisions are not reliable the problem here is that the convolution of the transmit signal with the channel is inherently fast because it is performed by the nature on the other hand the convolution of the equalizer impulse response with the match filter output is performed by our dsp machine and is inherently slow as compared to the natural process to implement high speed communication we cannot wait for the equalizer to converge or implement a large number of computations for each symbol decision therefore an alternative strategy is to go into frequency domain a frequency domain equalizer works in a block processing manner where information is sent in the form of blocks each block is taken into frequency domain where a simple equalizer can be implemented we will see how and decisions are made then the next block is taken into frequency domain simple equalization strategy is implemented and we move on in this manner here we discuss single carrier frequency domain equalization we are dealing with only one sample per symbol as the match filter output problem is that the match filter output was given by the convolution of the up sampled symbols with the channel impulse response can we write this as a product in frequency domain the answer is no because this equation is only true when the convolution is circular we have discussed this concept in lecture 2 on systems so the main question goes as follows how to make the received signal look like having come from a circular convolution although in reality it has come from a linear convolution procedure to solve this question we look at these figures this is a regular convolution between a transmit signal and a wireless channel and this is the circular convolution between the same two signals we can see that the result of both convolutions is the same at the end but different at the start these number of samples are determined by the signal length or in our case we can say channel length let us implement a regular convolution after repeating our sequence twice we have our transmit sequence where we append another copy of the same transmit sequence and then convolve it with the channel when this happens we can quickly spot that the complete result of a circular convolution is present in the final result this means that we can convert a linear convolution to a circular convolution if we just repeat the same sequence twice however doubling the signal duration is a high price to pay therefore knowing that the difference in length is only given by the channel length itself the best compromise is to only repeat a portion of the transmit sequence from the end with the maximum expected channel length this is known as a cyclic prefix therefore in a cyclic prefix we take a few samples in the end and prepend them at the start then we can write this equation the frequency domain samples are given by the product of these two values suppose that we know the data symbols which happens with during the training stage then the channel response can be estimated as the received samples divided by training symbols after obtaining h hat we can find the unknown modulated symbols by using those channel estimates a hat k equals z k over h hat k finally the data symbols can be recovered by taking the inverse discrete fourier transform of a hat k we have a second compelling reason for using the cyclic prefix remember that we said that frequency domain equalization implements a block processing structure 
let us focus on this intuitive method of convolution. When the convolution happens between the transmit sequence and the wireless channel, we can see that this is the direct path, this is the first multipath, this is the second. As long as the channel length is less than the cyclic prefix, all the multipath can only distort the portion of the next block that lies before the cyclic prefix. No interference can happen with the next block. A better terminology to use is interblock interference in this case.